Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. Today I have the pleasure to introduce our second video where we present you Parmigiani. I hope that you all have already seen our first video that we published last week where I was talking to the new CEO of the brand, to Guido Terreni. That was a real good start of our series of videos, I think. Today I have the pleasure to take you along to present you Les Artisans Boitier. That's where Parmigiani makes its cases and uh, cadrans et habillage. That's where they make the dials. Enjoy and have fun. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. I'm here in Switzerland in La Chaux de Fonds with the CEO of Parmigiani, Guido Terreni. Welcome, Guido. Thank you, Alex. Pleasure having you. I have the real pleasure and the real, it's an excitement, I have to say. Uh, Guido invited me to come to show you how a Tonda watch is done. They are really able to almost do everything in-house. And Guido, isn't it a pleasure? You just came to Parmigiani a couple of months ago where everything is integrated. Isn't it fantastic to say, okay, I have something in mind, they can do it. Of course. One of the reasons for which I accepted this challenge a year ago is the, the extraordinary skills, manufacturing skills that the Family Foundation has realized. In 25 years, starting from Parmigiani Furlier, which was the only company in 1996 where, when everything started, and then it became a, a group. So, there has been the creation of Vaucher for the movement, Les Artisans Boitier for the cases, Cadrance uh, for the dial, up to Atocalpa uh, for hair springs and regulating organs, and Elwin even doing high-end screws, which are incredible. So when you have all this knowledge, you are mastering your destiny. You can do really what you want if you have the ideas and if you have the, the creativity to build a brand. And the prestige of Parmigiani is founded on this great knowledge. And we are talking, of course, about a luxury brand. So you will see lots of human beings being involved. And Guido will tell you this when we are continuing our, or starting our, our journey here. It's not about cost saving, it's about making adding lots of pleasure on a watch that you might buy one day and you will be delighted every time again when you look on your wrist. It's luxury, small quantities, a couple of thousand watches per year. We're not talking about many watches. We're going to jump right into the door behind here. Enjoy, have fun, and Guido, thanks again for Thank having you. us here. And welcome. Yeah, let's go. So we are in the heart of Les Artisans Boitiers, where the case making is built. I will take you through, we are going to take you through the making of the Tonda PF and Micro Rotor case, which is this beautiful case done in three different parts. Everything starts from the arrival of the raw material, which is this uh, element that we purchase outside. This is a medical steel that we start from in order to get to do the scarure, which is the central part of the case. Now this central part of the case is done in five different components, four lugs and the carrier in the middle that is the circle. So this machine is now drilling. The lug from this raw material is going to cut out the shape, as you see here, from this cylinder. And then it will be finished and it will have the perfect shape to then be mounted on the carrier. The second very important component of the case is the bezel. The bezel is mounted on top of the carrier to make the, the aesthetic of the case. Now, differently from what you could imagine, this case does not have a steel bezel. It has a platinum bezel. And we start from a very important element, which is the raw material that comes in platinum, which is extremely heavy. You see how much material you have, and from there, you get to this section. Obviously, this material is not wasted, so we recuperate all the material that is lost in the process from this size 
to this size. Now there are two operations that I've done. The first is the technical shape that you do with the perfect uh, tolerances of uh, 0.5 cents of a millimeter. And the second are aesthetic to make the montage, so the, the nurdling of this, uh, of this bezel. So in this machine, we do both operations from this component and we come up to this component by placing this element here the outcome will be like this. We are doing something that is not visible from the outside. It's the preparation of the internal shape of the, of the case. And you see all these elements that are drilled in order to allow the movement and the dial to be held in the case. The third element of the case is the back case. The back case is very important, not only because it holds everything together, but we have designed it with a very particular shape. You see that there is an angle that goes towards the glass because it's upside down. And this allows you to have it resting on your wrist and elevates the lugs so they don't touch your skin and they don't put pressure on you. And this is done for an, a beautiful comfort on your wrist because the watch has to be very easily wearable. Now you see well, that we have reduced the volume. We are getting to a concentration where humans get their soul into the piece. And this is a very important uh, operation that you're going to see here. It's not yet aesthetically uh, visible because we're in the ebavourage. What does ebavourage mean? When a machine drills, it leaves a surface which, which is not yet technically perfect. So here we're just taking out the scrap that is left on the, on the metals uh, by the machine and this is done by hand and then we will go and polish the surfaces for the aesthetic of the piece. And this is what this gentleman is doing. He's really cleaning by hand, hole by hole, and the surface is pre being prepared to be then uh, finished for the eye of the end customer. We just came out from the ebavourage, so all the, the, the piece is ready to be polished. And now Vasco is going to uh, make the polishing come to life on this uh, case. It's one of the parts of case making that looks so simple when you see it. There's something turning, and there's a guy holding something on it, and you say, okay, what's so special? But I think this is one of the most difficult, one of those tasks where you really need lots of training, years of training to get that incredible feeling, how much you need to push on the polishing brushes. You are perfectly right. We, as clients, when we buy an object, we, we want to appreciate the craft. And what you see is through the light, because the light makes you see the details of the watch. When it's dark, you don't see anything. Now the details is how can the light reflect the metal to the eye of the client? And it can be done in many different ways and it's the surface of the metal that is making the show. If it's polished as a mirror, it has a certain effect. If it's brushed and, and you have lines that are making it more matte, it has another one. The mixture of the two is the beautiful sauce that makes everything beautiful. Now, when you do this by hand, it's sufficient to take out a little bit too much material and you're not respecting the de original design of the case. But these imperfections that are very minimal make uh, the eye understand that it's not an industrial product. Because if, if you do this work not by hand, the, the case would be cold, would be perfectly perfect, and it, it's, you, you feel it as cheap. Then when humans put their own work, after years of training, they're able to make the material become alive in, in, with its imperfections in reflection of the light, and that's the beauty of luxury. Because luxury is not done by machine, it's done by hand. And this is how it comes true. And Vasco, which is a specialized uh, polisher, uh, he does this work with a lot of love because you cannot do this 
uh, without, in, in a different way because you have to look at every detail, you have to make everything come to life as an emotion uh, you want to provide to the end customer. Yeah. It's hot when it comes out and you see the difference from before and after. After that, Vasco has polished perfectly the case. It's like a mirror, so it is very, very scratchable. Now, this operation is very important because it protects what his work in the next phases of production, and you cover this um, case, which is already polished, with this special material that allows to protect it. Now this is not pornography. We have uh, small little condoms that are put on the fingers because we cannot leave uh, our trace on the piece. So in this operation, you have a, a, a back case. And here you see there's nothing in between. Eh? There is the, the surface uh, with a hole. And then here you have the glass. So in this operation, we are mounting the glass with a gasket and then we are holding the glass uh, that is also an element of water resistance, so it's very important that it's done perfectly. And it's done by hand by this potence, which is looking at the strength that you put to put the glass on the, on the back case. You see this element, this beautiful element of design, which is like an M, which is allowing the continuity of the design from the bracelet to the case is also done here. And it's, it's this element here that then is mounted on uh, the central part of the case. In this uh, Tonda PF, you have plenty of surfaces that are in movement. If you look at the, the attach of the bracelet, it's not a, a unique flat surface. It starts at a lower level with a chamfer, and then you have a little step on this uh, brush part, and then you go down in the center of the bracelet, then you go up again, you have another chamfer which is polished, and then the, you have the end. These are very expensive operations. I don't believe in the profitability of luxury by taking out cost from the watches. I prefer to, to inject the maximum work that is possible to give a maximum experience to the client because that is what really makes the pleasure of owning a luxury timepiece. And it's not in looking for uh, savings that you make the magic. On the contrary, it's by thinking as how can I be subtly interesting in the pieces that we design and that we make. And that's why you need a savoir faire, which is exceptional, because these are design exigences that are extremely high and difficult to craft. After the assembly, we do the last uh, brushing on these elements to make it exactly at the same level. So they can uh, host the bracelet that will be mounted. This small room, it's an extremely important part of the company. It's where the quality is checked. Now, there are two levels of quality. One that is quality assurance, and one that is quality control. Quality assurance, you ask yourself, what can go wrong? And this is when you think about the processes and how to do things. And then quality control is what went wrong, and you, you check if uh, everything is, is in spec. So obviously, you cannot do this approximately. This has to be specifically scientifically measured. So these instruments are controlling the heights and the, the shapes of what comes out from the machinery. Uh, and it controls also what comes out from the polishing and from the aesthetical uh, uh, treatments that you did on the case and on the assemblage, on the assembly. All these tests are crucial because nothing goes further in the production of the case if it doesn't pass its intermediate uh, quality check. 21 different parts are the parts that make a Tonda case. Of course. <laughs> it's well, this is, this is a design that explains what you saw. 
from the making, the, the thinking of the construction of the case, but then every single element has its specificity, its quality control, its functionality, its aesthetics, and the, the, it's like a recipe of a chef. You, know? you put some ingredients, and then the outcome uh, has an effect which is technical and which is aesthetical. And the next thing we're going to see are the dyes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, part two. Everything is done in house here at Parmigiani, so dial is our next. Uh, yeah, um, things to discover. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes, thank you. Guido and I have changed now to come to the production site. It's in the same building where the dials are made. And you see we are now wearing some coats, dust protecting coats, because here it's more sensible than what we saw first with the, with the cases. And in the dial production, I think it's at least as delicate as the entire production of cases. And it's still handled in-house. It's Parmigiani know-how. And I don't tell you a secret that in here, not only dyes for Parmigiani are made, but also for other well, well known brands. I won't name them, but believe me, if you would see, you would, your mouth <laughs> would stand open. Well, exactly. He wouldn't tell me either. <laughs> Dial making is extremely uh, vast. Uh, to do a case is, is difficult, but you have basically uh, machinery, uh, surface treatment, and assembly. In, in a dial, you can have a variety of uh, techniques that are depending on what, which is the surface and how you want to treat the surface, which is the color you want to give, which is uh, the emotion you want to create. So there are much more métier in a dial making than in a case making. You start from a disc. This is the raw material that comes. Very simple disc in brass. That's uh, usually the material that is often used. We also use gold, we also use platinum on different bottles, like the Tonda PF uh, Split Second uh, Limited Edition is done with a platinum uh, dial. And then everything starts from a small operation which seems insignificant, which you put as a first step little pins that are functional, not for the watch, but for the production. Through these little pins, the dial is held in every phase by the machines, by the, the tools, and it allows not to touch the dial uh, in the making. And this is a very sensitive operation because the precision of everything that is done after depends on how precise these two little foot are put on the back of the dial. After having started the production on the base with the two pins, we treat the surface through the guillotage. The guillotage is uh, a surface which is drilled by machine in order to have a, a certain aesthetic. And uh, we chose the Grand Arche aesthetic in a size that is extremely, extremely small. This to make it very contemporary. And this is what, I'm, what you see finished here, a texture that is extremely sophisticated, not in your face, discreet, that is done in a very delicate way. Then in this machine you have the cut from this surface here to the shape, to the final shape. So from the total disc with the guilloche finishing already done, it, this machine is preparing the window for the date, the little holes to allow you to mount the indexes and it cuts out the material that is not necessary anymore. So here we are in another hidden operation which is not visible uh, but it's extremely important. 
Once you have done the guilloche and you have drilled, uh, you have done the holes, you have cut your, your surface, you have put tensions on the brass. So the, the, the dial is not flat anymore. And uh, to do so, to, to make the rest of the operations possible, you need to redistribute the, the different tensions that these precedent phases has created and that made the, the, the dial not flat anymore. And you do this by sandblasting. Basically, behind the, 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 the dial, you sandblast the surface. And by doing this, all the tensions are released in a uniform way, in, a, in an homogeneous way. And the, the dial is again flat. Let's call it a massage. It's a massage. <laughs> now you're relaxed. The tension We're is out. We're going to relax the dial. <laughs> We're relaxing the dial. Oh. There you go. Dial making also involves some chemistry and we are here showing you how the dyes are firstly cleaned, the surfaces are treated in a way that you can apply the color you want on it. And Guido will again, he's a perfect host by the way, <laughs> I have to say. It's incredible, you're doing all my work, but I'm so happy. No, 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 I, I love uh, the work in the, in the, in the manufacturing it, is, is the passion that I have. Doesn't it show a passionate the CEO is, it's incredible. Guido, it's, it's you, please. <laughs> okay, so this is a very, another very important phase because we are here to clean the dial before making it uh, with a different color. So you saw how much oil you had, how much grease you had in the making. And now before to, to put a color, the dial has to be perfectly clean. So it's like going in a bath and it's a chemical treatment that takes out the grease and it makes it perfectly prepared to, uh, to host a finishing. Now you can do different levels of coloring. It can be a, a galvanic process. It can be a PVD treatment. The PVD is a coating. It depends on what effect you want to, to have. Here in this phase, we are looking at the galvanic process, which has uh, uh, nickel and gold as elements to, to color, but you can do many other different uh, uh, effects in the end. But it's very important, view that you have a guillotage so thin that the color does not, is not thick, because if the color is thick, it takes out the work of the guillotage, which is the beauty of the treatment. So there are very, very few microns of paint or of coloring that uh, are, are deposited on the surface, and this allows not to change the aesthetic and the work that uh, so hard was to, do, to be done on the guillotine. So here there's the last operation, and you will see the final color, which is much darker. Look at this, how the colors have changed after the galvanic treatment of the surfaces. Wonderful. So now we are in the Atelier de Decalque. It's the last operation before assembling the indexes. Here you print the minute scale on the outside of the guilloche to see the indications of the minutes. And it's an operation that's done with a special machine that allows to be very precise and have a mark that is extremely thin and precise. So this operation is very important because you must not put too much paint. And on this mirror here, in reality, you have um, a depression of, of a surface where the paint remains. And it will be then taken by this sort of tampon that gets the color and that it deposits on the dial. That's what remains after you take out the color. So 
So you see all two passage to two times the color to give you this small little indication of the seconds. And you can see how small it's written Swiss made here at six o'clock. And this is done just through this operation. So Guido, what's the next step uh, when the dial is being completed? So this is the last operation that you will see, and it's the final one, it's the assembly. What do you assemble on the dial? You assemble the indexes on the base, on the plate, and the logo. So uh, this is uh, an operation which is very delicate because the indexes are mirror polished, so they're very easy to scratch, and plus, my fault, uh, I wanted a, a, an index on two surfaces. The, the aesthetic of the dial, the guilloche is in a predominant position, and the, the miniature scale is in a lower uh, position with two different treatments, sandblasted and guilloche. And the, the difficulty is that the index is like mounted on a step. And this is very peculiar in terms of design, but it's an effect that we wanted and, uh, and we like a lot. And so we're making life a little bit more difficult for who is assembling the, the dials, but that's part of the beauty of luxury. This is a finished dial. You see the guilloche, which is extremely thin, and ext you see it and you don't see it. And you see how the indexes are reflecting the light very powerfully as a mirror. Here on the outside of the guilloche, you see the lower level of the minute scale, and, will, and the indexes are mounted across the two surfaces, like on a step. And these are all details that are very subtle, that you don't discover at the first glance, you discover them by wearing the watch and by looking at it. And it's, it's, a, it's a growing understanding of what the work has been behind this uh, execution. So Guido, thank you so much for showing us how the dial was made. And this is what you get when you end of the day buy the Tonda. And Guido will give you kind of a, a resume. Summary. A summary, yeah. A summary. I, I, I'm thinking French because we're in the French party, a resume, <laughs> but a summary of what we saw first. So I'm going to use a, not your beautiful professional pointer, I have a, another plastic pointer here, but it, 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 it serves the scope. So first you saw the case no, with all the different uh, finishings, like here you see the brushing, the the polishing on the lug, this digressive chamfering that and goes all around uh, the polished element. Then you have the, another brush here, these different surfaces, the platinum bezel that is also soft at the touch. And then you get, get into the dial, this choice of color, which is subtle. It is unique for Parmigiani. It didn't exist this color before. The level of uh, small guilloche to give you this perfect uh, feeling of texture without being invasive and without looking too old-fashioned. The indexes that are mounted across the two surfaces, the, 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 the Parmigiani PF seal uh, at 12 o'clock. And to make this visible to the eye when it's encased, the glass is with a double anti-reflex treatment because you would never be able to see and admire this uh, micro uh, guilloche uh, if we didn't put two coating of uh, anti-reflex treatment on the dial. So that's the end result. And uh, I think we are very proud of the outcome. Guido will again He's a perfect host, by the way, I have to say. <laughs> it's incredible. You're doing all my work, but I'm so happy. No, no, no. I, I love uh, the work in the, in the, in the manufacturing it, is, is the passion that I have. Doesn't it show how passionate the CEO is? It's incredible. Guido, it's, it's you, please. <laughs>